Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Chuki Chen, and today we're chatting with... Effie Barak. Hi, Effie. Hey. Uh, where are you based, and what do you do? I am from San Francisco, and I'm a senior Android developer at Udemy. Which is where we are. We are in the beautiful studio of Udemy. We're actually very excited. We've never shot in a professional studio before. This is amazing. And how do you get started on Android? Um, so I was a Microsoft.NET engineer for maybe 10 <laughs> years. I was working on Windows Phone uh -huh. and their mobile platform. I didn't know that there are .NET engineers in the Bay Area. They're very rare, yeah. which was part of the reason why I decided to <laughs> move into <laughs> Android. Android. Great. And I just started picking it up. I started learning like by taking online courses and seeing mm -hmm. and reading blog posts. What so you were doing that on the side, or like you switched to a job that requires Android? Um, I switched to a job that requires Android. Oh, okay. But they also uh, took into consideration that I'm very new at this. Yeah. So that's nice, though, that people give you a chance. Because sometimes you read like job descriptions, they want you to have done Android for 20 years. I was like, you can't do Android for 20 years. It doesn't exist yet. So I'm glad that there are actually employers who are willing to get you who doesn't have a lot of experience, but know that you can learn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Th so the thing was that um, before I started uh, working for uh, Udemy, mm -hmm. I actually built their client for Windows Phone. So hey, I that's looked an interesting way to get a job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I looked at their API, mm -hmm. and I just reverse engineered their Android app and oh, build it for Windows Phone. Wow, you are really <laughs> determined. <laughs> and they were really excited about that. They mm -hmm. were like, we don't want to have a Windows Phone app. Like, We don't want to make it official. Right. But we're really excited that you took this initiative right. and you created this product for us. And they told customers, this is an app that you can use whenever they were asking for like Windows ah. Phone. So, so it's an unofficial app. Yeah. But if people want it, you didn't say, well, but Effie built one, so you can just download hers. We don't need to build one. Yeah, exactly. That's wonderful. So I'm kind of curious how you did that, because I do Android consulting. And a lot of the times, I'll have clients that have an iOS phone. So I'm not reverse engineering their app, because I actually work with them. But I will be too impatient to ask them how their REST API works. So I'll put in an HTTP proxy, so I can watch the traffic and see what parameters they send to the server. Like, do yeah, you do the same exactly, thing? Okay, exactly. Cool. Yeah, and I use Fiddler. Yeah. Okay, Th that's great. like uh, Charles for, for yeah. Windows. Yeah, and I, I, I use Charles as a filler. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Because I guess if you're a .NET developer, then your whole tool chain is on Windows. Yes, exactly. Do you develop Android on Windows as well? No. Oh, I okay. did a little you bit. don't hate yourself enough. <laughs> <laughs> I did a little bit. Uh -huh. um, the installing in the drivers is a little bit uh, of a hassle. Even though once you get over it, right. it's, it's pretty much uh, seamless. Yeah, I haven't used Windows for so long. I remember that everything I need, I'm like, it's not even called command. Basically, the Microsoft key and R. I have to bring out the run buttons. So just run things. I don't know where things are. Just run it, run it, run it. So I yeah. had the exact opposite thing moving to uh, <laughs> OS, so, yeah. like Mac OS. And, so yeah. I don't know where <laughs> things are. That's wonderful. Um, so another thing I want to talk about today is the fact that Udemy has well, a lot of videos because it teaches people various things by video. And I heard that um, you are kind of getting started on switching from Media player to EXO player. Right. So I'm kind of curious, like, what does that even mean? Because I don't really do video. So, like, what does media player do, and why do you think that it's not satisfying your needs anymore, and you knew you need to do something different? So, media player is this out of the box solution where you can just throw a URL into it, and okay. it will just play. Hmm. So, as long as that works, you're fine. You're good. You're good to go. Okay. The issue is that it's not an open API. So it's written in C++. So if you want to extend it, if you want to change stuff, mm -hmm. if you want to debug it, it's not very easy to do. So when you say pass a URL to it, like what does it do? Does it stream? Does it download it? It like streams it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But then that that's all the control you have. You just say go stream that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or if of course if it's a file that you already downloaded it, it will you can also yeah, stream, stream a local file. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how about Exo Player? And Exo Player gives you a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. It's open source. It's written in Java. You can go and you can see all of it. You can extend oh. it. You can customize it. You can replace components or add your Ooh. own if they're missing. Oh, so interesting. So it's set up more like a 
system of various components rather than one black box. Like, exactly. So media peers like, here, play something versus, so what kind of components are there? I mean, I'm, I don't know how far you are into this little project, of, not, not little maybe, this huge project <laughs> of switching the infrastructure of video playing like, what are the different things that you can customize in an Excel player? So, I can tell you what we wanted out of it, right? And yeah. what advantages we got from from switching. Yeah. And I guess I'm also going to talk more about it and the components and everything in my talk. At That's true. Yeah. Denver. Actually, the reason why I wanted to ask her about it is because, um, well, I'm running a conference in Denver in July, and Evie's going to give a talk on Excel Player. So I kind of want to get a little bit of a preview of like, what she's going to talk about. So we will probably not talk about everything she's going to talk about in the talk, because I want to say some good stuff for the actual talk. But I would love to know just kind of a high level um, why you picked Excel Player for Udemy and what kind of features that you find interesting. Yeah. So yeah. like I said, Media Player was really good to start with. You don't mm -hmm. have to write a lot of code. You don't have to uh, customize anything. You can right. basically just plug, plug in. Play. Yeah, plug and play. Yeah. It works. Mm -hmm. The problem starts when you run into this, these edge cases. Say you have a specific phone or a specific version of phone. Oh. Um, those are shipped with Media Player built in. So wow. you're using whatever version is on the phone right now. Wow. So <laughs> if you have different versions, yeah. different phones, you might run into weird bugs that mm -hmm. are very hard to reproduce or very hard to make sure that you get consistent experience right. across all devices. While in ExoPlayer, you are the one responsible for shipping the API. Because you bundle that yeah. library with your app rather than calling into the system. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it still uses the media codecs, so it's not 100%. Um, right, so there will be still component that's dependent on the actual yeah. hardware that yeah. you don't ship. Exactly, but okay. a lot less. So right. you get a lot more consistent experience. Mm -hmm. And it's easier to debug. It's easier to extend because it's all written in Java and it's mm. open source. So it's really easy for you to modify. We wanted to modify it for things like HLS wasn't working properly for us because we had a little bit, uh, we changed the streams a little bit. Oh, OK. And oh, you're breaking the standard then. Yeah. All right. Okay. And we were considering <laughs> implementing Dash at some point, and mm, we yeah. couldn't do that. And we wanted also to introduce uh, variable speeds so you can play oh. your video at different speeds. Right. And that's another thing that we couldn't do with Media Player. And yeah. we could do with Excel. Yeah, I, I like that because when you're watching a course, sometimes you just kind of want to quickly get like what's happening. So. Yeah. so do you, I don't know how, how much uh, specific there is, but like for example, when you want to change the speed, like what, what, what do you exactly do to Excel Player to do that? Do you write an extra plugin for it, or do you change a perimeter of an existing component? Like it's what does that write involve? your own. So oh, Excel okay. Player is a lot more write your own stuff, oh, okay. and you can implement stuff that didn't exist or implement your own logic to add to their stuff. Mm -hmm. So for example, the variable speed changes right. is something that we uh, added. Uh -huh. We added another library that mm -hmm. uh, changes the um, the buffer, oh, basically, okay. and we feed it back to the Kodak. To um, okay, so is there kind of an ecosystem of different plugins that different people use that you can plug into Excel Player? Because I can imagine other people will probably want to change the speed of the video, or maybe not crack the HLS <laughs> you know standard, but I feel like in this community of other people who are also playing video, there's probably overlapping needs. Is there, so basically, um, do people we, publish their, their little plugins? I didn't see too much of it. Okay. I do see that ExoPlayer is changing very rapidly Okay. Uh, based on PRs, based on requests from people, based hmm. on changes that they make. They, right. it, they change versions every, I guess, week or month even. Wow, and yeah, so they're it's not really active development. Yeah, and they're okay. not very hesitant about breaking uh, the, their API as well. Like they can, wow. you, you should really be careful about <laughs> upgrading because yeah. they will break their API really easily for new features or changes oh, wow. that they make. I guess it's like good and bad, right? The bad thing is that, well, your app may break, but the good thing is that it's in active development, so you can get new features and yeah. improvements and things like that. Cool. Is there anything else you would like to tell me about Excel Player? Um, We're kind of running out of time, so just want to, like, maybe one more thing, <laughs> or not. <laughs> 
So I wanted to talk more uh, in my talk mm -hmm. about specific like impl Im implementation details that we had, mm. how we also created our background media service that continues playing while the uh, video is in background mode. So you can only hear the yeah, audio. Yeah, so only oh, audio. Oh, nice. And I assume that Media Player can't handle that. Um, it actually can, oh, but we okay. did make some changes. We mm. made it better. It turned out to be a lot faster. It uh, the loading times were faster on ExoPlayer. Ah. Um, we fixed some stuff with uh, other libraries that we were working with. Mm. So the whole experience was a lot better and easier. Great. To so it sounds like you're on a good path, just yeah. like switching from something that's more extensible and more customizable. Cool. Well, I'm going to stop right here so that people will buy tickets to my conference to come and listen to Effie talk about ExoPlayer. This is wonderful. And uh, if people want to follow you on the internet, where can they find you? My Twitter feed is Coding Chick. So oh, we'll put a link and then you can all follow her. Great. Thank you so much, Effie. Thanks. Bye.